Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of the Tech Sports Report. I'm your man, Matt Jenkins, and we've had another great week here of Arkansas Tech Athletics. In today's show, we're going to recap everything that's been happening, as well as later in the show, we will be joined by sophomore Golan Suns tennis player Haley Long, as well as the voice of the Arkansas Tech Wonder Boys and Arkansas Tech Golden Suns, Sam Strasner. This week, we're going to start the show with a recap of Golden Suns Volleyball as they hosted a pair of GAC rivals inside Tucker Coliseum. We'll start with the Friday match. McCall Wilkins gets the Golden Suns off to a strong start as she puts down this kill to win set number one. In the second set, Lauren Rodimers gets it through the Savage Storm block to end the set. And Southeastern put up more of a fight in the third set, but this kill by Hunter Eschner ended up sealing the deal and the victory for the Arkansas Tech Golden Suns. Tech won the match in straight sets, 25-16, 25-18, and 25-20. Eschner led the Arkansas Tech attack with 13 kills. Sarah Rosinke dished out 22 assists. And the defense was led by Madison Nagel with 13 digs. The following day, the Golden Suns faced off against East Central. The Suns struggled out of the gate but came away with a big rally in the first set on this kill by Hunter Eschner to come away with the first set. Tech ran away with the second set, opening the set on an 8-0 run on this monster kill by Rodimers. Later in the set, Eschner put the Tigers away on this service ace to win the set 25-10. In the third set, Kaylee Kinsella gets a monster kill here to help the Suns put away the Tigers 25-20. Tech ended up winning in straight sets 25-18, 25-10, and 25-20. The Suns hit a blistering 385 hitting percentage and recorded 14 blocks for the match. Eschner led the Golden Suns attack with 14 kills, and Kinsella added 9 on an incredible 750 hitting percentage. Rosinke dished out a team-high 18 assists, and Nagel led the defensive effort with 15 digs. After the match, we caught up with Golden Suns head coach Christy Beyer. I thought we had a really good weekend this weekend. Our offense was really clicking. I thought our two setters, uh, Amanda Milnick and Sarah Rosinke, just did just a great job running our offense. Our offense was it was very evenly distributed. They they knew who to feed and when to feed them. Um, our hitters were going with power and they were explosive. I was really happy with our offense this weekend. The Arkansas Tech Wonder Boys football team looked to snap their two-game losing streak as they traveled down to Arkadelphia, Arkansas for a tough road matchup against the Washita Baptist. In the end, the Wonder Boys had no problem with the Washita Baptist Tigers as they came away with a huge road victory, 49 to 17. Outside of giving up an opening drive field goal, Tech controlled the game after scoring on their opening drive and would lead the game by as much as 39 points. Jabias Cross put together an outstanding game in his second start at quarterback, going 12 of 15 for 265 yards passing and three touchdowns to go along with 60 yards rushing and a rushing touchdown. Brian Allen led the rushing attack with 98 yards on 14 carries, and Braden Stringer led the receivers with 79 yards receiving. Christian Thompson also recorded a pair of touchdown receptions, while Quay Rose had a big-time return on the defense, recording a game-high 12 tackles. The Golden Suns cross-country team had to meet pretty close to home this weekend as they participated in the Ozarks Invitational. The Suns were running in their fourth Ozarks invite in the last five years and put together a very strong performance. Cami Headstrom shoots past a pair of Harding runners to finish the race in fourth place. Amory Era in her first Ozarks race also put together a very strong performance, crossing the finish line in 11th place. A group of Golden Suns runners came in with a solid finish here as Angel Mapp crossed the finish line at 27th place, Mallory Morris in 30th, and Logan Edwards in 31st. The Golden Suns vastly improved over last year's fifth place finish in the meet with a second place finish this year. The Golden Suns beat out John Brown by 21 places and finished well ahead of Delta State and the University of Dallas who rounded out the top five. The Golden Suns tennis team finished off their fall season with a very strong performance at the Collin College Open this past weekend. Haley Long was a champion of the Flight 5 singles bracket, winning four matches to come away with the title. The doubles pairing of Annabelle Rollins and Teresa Sanchez received the co-champions of the Flight 2 doubles bracket after the finals were called off due to time constraints from weather delays. Maka Acosta was the runner-up of the Flight 1 singles bracket, and Maria Vasquina lost a very close Flight 6 singles championship match to come away with second place in that flight. 
Buskina and her partner Vandela Suico battled back from an opening day loss to win a pair of matches to come away with the Flight 3 Consolation co-champions. The Suns amazingly had six individual players in the semifinals of their respective fights to put the feather in the cap on a very fine fall season. The Wonder Boys golf team was looking to get their third consecutive tournament victory this past Monday and Tuesday as they participated in the Holiday Inn Express Classic. Unfortunately, Tech fell just a little bit short, but still had an outstanding finish, coming in a tie for second in the tournament that featured some of the best teams in the region. The Wonder Boys shot an 876 for the tournament, finishing in a tie for second with Southwestern Oklahoma and finishing just four strokes back of Central Missouri. Lou Cornett led the Wonder Boys with a fourth place finish, shooting three over par for the tournament, and Ryan Spurlock finished right behind him in seventh place with a four over at the event. The Golden Suns golf team also participated in one of the toughest tournaments in the nation this past Monday and Tuesday, the Dallas Baptist Invitational. The Suns finished in a very impressive fifth place in the tournament that featured 11 of the top 50 teams in Division II. Some of those teams included the 13th ranked St. Edwards, 17th ranked Midwestern State, and 30th ranked Central Oklahoma. Jessica Sachs led the Suns with a 13th place finish, shooting a career three round load 224 for an eight over par. Anna Franzen also turned in a top 20 performance, carding a 226 for a 10 over par for the tournament. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll have Golden Suns tennis player Haley Long on set with us talking about her very successful fall season. We'll be right back. You are watching the Tech Sports Report. Are you a Tech sports fan? Then it's time for you to get rewarded with the Fight On Rewards app. Check into Tech Athletic events to earn points and redeem for awesome prizes. You can also interact on social media, fan polls, and post pictures through our fan cam. The app is now available for free through the App Store or the Google Play Store. Looking to get the inside stories of Arkansas Tech athletics? Then be sure to subscribe to Tech Talk, the official podcast of Arkansas Tech sports. Available for free right now on iTunes. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? Welcome back to the Tech Sports Report. I'm your man, Matt Jenkins, here with Golden Suns tennis player Haley Long. Haley, how are you doing this afternoon? We're doing well, thank you. I figured you would be because, I mean, you, you came away with a big tournament victory to end your season off. But before we get to that, let's just talk about the overall team. You had a very successful season at the whole team as a whole. Just talk about um, the success of the program this upcoming semester. Yeah, we had a really good fall season. We had we hosted our own tournament here for the first time, and we all did very well at that. And then we went to the ITAs. We played well as the whole team there and then we came off with some good wins in the tournament this past weekend also. And talk about your success in this tournament this past weekend. You won the Flight 5 Singles Championship. Just talk about your success in the tournament because overall from top to bottom you played very well throughout that entire uh, throughout that entire match and throughout the entire championship. Yeah, I had a really good tournament. My last match was really tough. I had to play a tiebreaker in both sets but it was a good tournament. How tough is that? No, like playing the, doing two, two different tiebreakers in a match. Is that hard on a uh, psychologically on you or is that just part of tennis? I'm not a tennis player so I'm just I'm asking it may be a dumb question but how hard is that to like battle through two tiebreakers? It is rough but since I've played tennis for so long it's just kind of become so part of it. pretty much you're just saying you're a boss at tennis. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so, uh, but you guys have finished up for the fall. Uh, before we talk about look ahead to next year what goes into the offseason with you? Just trying to stay in shape? Trying to, is there anything you'd like to work on heading into next spring? Or? Um, we just keep working out with Coach Dole like we've been doing. And then we have less official practices because we can't do that as much in the offseason. But we hit by ourselves as a team. We have some just like team-led practices instead mm -hmm. of Coach being there. When, when do you guys report for spring next year in 2017? Um, just after Christmas break. Oh, we come okay. Back. So right after yeah. that. Oh, excellent. Um, is there anywhere you'd like to improve personally? And you? Oh. I mean, you're already doing very. I mean, you're doing great stuff as a sophomore right now. So, uh, but every player, I'm, every sport you look at, every word, everyone has a place they'd like to improve. Yeah, just my mental game. I think needs to continue getting stronger. What about the team overall? You think? 
I think we're going to have a really good spring season. We did awesome in the fall. so I'm Can't go wrong with confidence. Yeah. Well, every time we've had players and athletes on here, we always like to get the normal a little bit better, let the fans know a little bit more about Haley Long. So, um, talk to, who is your favorite tennis player of all time? Um, John Isner, probably. Why? Just because, good. yeah, I just, I don't know. I just like the way he plays. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, is there a favorite moment from that player that you like? Um, a couple of years back, he played a really long match, and he ended up winning 70-68 in the fifth set. So that's wow. awesome. Yeah, it was like the longest tennis match ever. Wow. I, I, seems like I remember reading about that. Um, yeah. When did you start, when did tennis like become your first love when you started playing tennis, that kind of thing? Um, about five or six years old. Five years old and you started playing tennis? Yeah. What, what really, what attracted you to tennis? Um, my dad played in high school okay. and so then started when I was like five or six and then never quit. Awesome. Uh, if it wasn't tennis, if tennis was outside of the picture, what would your next sport be that you'd like to focus um, on? I ran cross country in middle school, so I guess cross country. So you do the two sports that I could never do. <laughs> I'm nowhere near conditioned enough to do cross country. Uh, last one, how long would you last in a match with Serena Williams? You can be honest, we've asked, at, lost, asked, we've asked a lot of honest questions on this show, so. Uh, probably not very long, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> You can be competitive, though, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. maybe. See, confidence, that's all you need. Yeah. Haley, thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have the voice of the Arkansas Tech Wonder Boys and Golden Sun, Sam Strasner, on set with us. We'll be right back. I knew Arkansas Tech had an impressive history, but I didn't know that my professors would look out for my future. I knew I'd be throwing fastballs on the field, but I didn't know I'd be on the fast track to physical therapy school. I knew my art professors had years of experience, but I didn't know that I would get real world experience before graduation. I knew Tech was close to home, but I didn't know it would feel like home. Tech has one of the highest graduation rates in the state. Come take a tour of campus and discover what else you don't know about Tech. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect. It's the name of the game. Welcome back to the Tech Sports Report. I'm your host, Matt Jenkins, and I'm here with one of my favorite people across Arkansas Tech, the voice of the Wonder Boys and Golden Sun, Sam Strachner. Sam, how are you doing this afternoon? Well, I'm doing better now. Good chance to visit <laughs> with you, Matt. Thank you for having we've me. We've always had good conversations when we've talked in the past. So Absolutely. I have no doubt that this interview is going to be excellent. Yeah. Let's just talk about um, you, because a lot of people, I mean, you're the director of university relations, uh, but the big thing of people know you is you're the voice of the Wonder Boys. So just before we dive into that, just talk about how you got your start kind of diving into Arkansas Tech University and getting involved with uh, Arkansas Tech Athletics? Well, whenever I was in high school, I had a chance to cover high school sports quite a bit for the local newspaper, The Courier, and uh, out of that I got a chance to come and uh, work in our sports information office at Arkansas Tech as an undergraduate and also work on the school newspaper. So I, I got a fair amount of experience on kind of the sports writing side through that. And then as I went through my undergraduate experience, there was one, I believe it was during my junior year, there was a basketball road trip that our play-by-play our -play announcer wasn't going to be able to make. And I thought, well, I'd like to try that and just see what it's like. And so I went and did a couple of games, and it was enjoyable. And then uh, in 2002, uh, Tom Camerling, uh, who's now our, our PA announcer, at that time he was doing radio for Russellville High School and Arkansas Tech University. So he had a lot on his plate in addition to his, his radio job. And so I reached out to him and said, hey, Tom, uh, have, have you ever thought about maybe needing any help for the Arkansas Tech games play-by-play? -play? I'd had a chance to get some experience doing play-by-play -play, uh, while I was the sports information director at Henderson State University for one year, uh, right after I finished my bachelor's degree. And so uh, through all of that, uh, Tom said yes, and uh, so that was 2002. And uh, since then, we haven't been able to find anybody else who's uh, <laughs> crazy enough to make the road trip. So I've, I've been able to continue doing it. It's something that I, I really enjoy and, and hope that it makes a contribution to the Arkansas Tech community. You've been to so many different schools, or not, not working for, but just you've seen a lot of schools. What makes tech different? Because I'm sure you've had chances to move up and not necessarily move on from tech, but just go different places. What makes tech so special? Because you're one of those people that you're tech through and through. You, you, instead of bleeding red, you probably bleed green and gold. Well, it's, I think for, first and foremost, it's the people here. It's, uh, you know, whether you're talking about within the athletics department or across campus, uh, the people you get to work with here at Arkansas Tech University, uh, it's folks that uh, really kind of have that, uh, that family feel as part of their, you know, their personality. And they, they enjoy that. They enjoy 
Uh, and maybe, you know, don't always take themselves too seriously. That's, that's a good thing to look for. And I, I find that in a lot of my tech colleagues, you know, they, they take what they do very seriously, but they don't take themselves very seriously. Absolutely. And so uh, that's a great environment in which to work and study. And so uh, it's, it's part of what's made it an attractive place for me. Was there any, um, like radio personalities that you looked up, like play-by-play -play guys that you looked up to when you were maybe starting to get your start in radio and kind of thinking like, hey, I could really make a career into this? Probably the, the three folks that had the, the most influence on me on a kind of a, a state or regional or national level uh, was uh, Paul Eels, uh, Channel 7, and, and other, other responsibilities that he had. And then uh, Skip Carey and Pete Van Weeren with the Atlanta Braves. I grew up listening to those guys uh, every day during the summer. And I think that was a good mix because uh, Skip was a little bit, a uh, little bit on the irreverent side. And I'm, I'm probably a little more Pete, uh, kind of just kind of facts and figures. But uh, uh, every once in a while I hear, as something comes through my lips, I hear a little bit of Skip in there every once in a while. <laughs> and so that's, that makes me smile whenever I, that happens. But uh, those three guys on a state and national level. And then on a local level, we've always had such a great uh, uh, pool of talent here. Uh, for broadcasters, if it's Johnny Story or Tom Camerling or the late D. Doyle, uh, been, having a chance to grow up and listen to those guys locally uh, also made a huge impact on me. And you get a lot of traits from, like, listening to these guys are kind of like, they call a game like this, so I'm going to try to start doing that. Um, is there a part, like, a favorite radio call from any of, like, the, the national guys that you just mentioned or local guys? Is there a, is there a call that, like, just, man, that's, that's why we do what we do? I'd say probably uh, in about, I believe it was 1992, the Atlanta Braves were playing the Pittsburgh Pirates in the, the National League Championship Series, and uh, Sid Bream, uh, the Braves' first baseman, who was not too fleet afoot, uh, <laughs> he, uh, he scored on a, on a single through the left side, and, uh, and Skip Carey's call of that is probably one that really sticks in my brain, is one that's uh, maybe the favorite that I've ever heard. Is there a personal call of yours that you enjoy? Because I've listened to several of them, and there's some were like buzzer beaters in basketball, football, uh, there's tons of calls that I personally enjoy, but is there one that really just sticks out in your mind that's one of your favorites? I would say back in the NCAA tournament about six or seven years ago, the Golden Suns uh, were trailing uh, University of Tampa uh, by, I believe it must have been by two points with about 18 seconds left. And uh, the Golden Suns uh, had the ball, called a timeout, and uh, Jenny Vining ended up hitting the, the game-winning three-pointer uh, on that possession. And th that's probably uh, my favorite one that I've had a chance to be a part of. The one thing about that call I regret is it, it's a lesson in going ahead and saying what you see. As the Golden Suns went back on the floor after that timeout, Jenny was kind of over on the far side of the floor and she was looking at the floor and she was just kind of pawing at it with her left foot. And it was the exact same thing I'd seen Michael Jordan do about a thousand times whenever he was trying to get himself geared up for a big, a big moment. And Jenny was doing that exact same thing. And I'd, I failed to mention that's the one thing about that that I've, that I've always regretted. Uh, real quick, and also a couple more things I want to touch on. You're involved in the Verse podcast with Paul Smith on Tech Talk. Uh, we talked about it when Paul Smith was on the air. Just talk about it from your perspective. It's really neat. I mean, he's always talked about all the stories that aren't necessarily told, and this podcast really uh, embodies that. Yeah. And you were you were the first episode, so just talk about that podcast and how cool that is to kind it of have it out there now. It is. You know, the great. You know, if you're if you're doing a talk show on a traditional radio station, you know, you've got a prescribed amount of time, thirty minutes or an hour or fifteen minutes, whatever it may be. But the podcast, it's very much more of a free-flowing conversation. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how long we ended up talking that day, but it, it didn't seem like very long. But then <laughs> when I listened to it back, I thought, man, we talked for a long time. But uh, so, you know, I think that's the great thing about podcasts and the great thing about technology. You know, great thing about what we're doing right now is it just gives more platforms for people to tell more stories, to hear more stories. And by making those personal connections, that's the way we get fans really excited about things like tech athletics. Absolutely. Well, let's wrap up our conversation. We're right in the middle of the football season. The London boys are 3-3, three and three, coming off a huge, huge road victory against the Washita Baptist. What are some of your takeaways from uh, where from the season up to where we are now? Well, when you look at the Wonder Boys record, three and three, all three of those losses have been by seven points or less. And so there may be a half a dozen plays away from being six and oh and ranked in the top five or ten in the country. So it's been that close this year for the Wonder Boys. And I think last Saturday at Washita Baptist, you saw evidence of what this team is capable of during the second half of the year. Jabias Cross is really getting comfortable now at quarterback. He made some beautiful throws on Saturday. Showed, you know, I think we've always known that Jabias has the ability to throw the deep ball but he showed a great touch on the football as he threw it on uh, Saturday. So I think that's one of the big things that came out of that. And now, you know, as you look ahead, really, there's a lot of goals and a lot of possibilities that still exist for this team. Because they still, I mean, they could easily finish this season off eight and three, that's, theoretically. That's in the hat. Uh, and then they'll wrap up the season with Harding and we'll get to that. That's going to be one of the biggest games of the year. Um, 
And I also want to congratulate you. We got a, I hear we have a new Wonder Boy or a Golden Sun potentially Absolutely. coming here soon. Coming up here in just a few months. My, my, <laughs> myself and my wife Heather, we're expecting around May 1st or so, and it'll be, uh, it'll be exciting to, uh, to be able to add that new Wonder Boy or Golden Sun. And uh, the best news is that our, our campus ambassador, Jerry the Bulldog, he's, he's very fond of babies. <laughs> and so I think that uh, I think they'll get along just great. So it'll be good. Sam, I appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. Congratulations on that. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will have more here on the Tech Sports Report. I knew I'd follow my heart into the Arkansas Tech nursing program, but I didn't know I'd fall in love with the campus. I knew I would check out international business, but I didn't know I could check out a mountain bike. I knew Tech had plenty of degrees that matched my interest, but I didn't know I wanted to study pre-med. Or pre-law. I knew Arkansas Tech had an impressive history, but I didn't know that my professors would look out for my future. Tech has one of the highest graduation rates in the state. Come take a tour of campus and discover what else you don't know about Tech. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. Welcome back to the Tech Sports Report. I'm your man, Matt Jenkins, and it is now time for our Fight on Rewards Fan Poll Question of the Week, brought to you by Super Fan U. This week, our question is, Golden Suns tennis player Haley Long had a remarkable fall season, winning her flight in the GAC Individual Championship and the Collin Community College Open. What record did she finish with in the fall season? Was it A, 6-0, B, 7-1, C, 9-1, or D, 10-0? Again, you can answer this fan poll question on the Fight On Rewards app, available for free from the App Store on Apple devices and from the Google Play Store on Android devices. And now we're at the portion of the show where we look ahead and let you know what's upcoming for Arkansas Tech Athletics. The Golden Suns volleyball team will be back in action on Friday night as they travel to Alva, Oklahoma to take on Northwestern Oklahoma. That match is scheduled for a 6 p.m. start and then on Saturday, Tech will head to Weatherford, Oklahoma to face off against Southwestern, Oklahoma. That match is scheduled for a 2 o'clock p.m. start. Also on Saturday, the Wonder Boys football team is back home inside Thone Stadium, riding on that big road victory over a Washita Baptist. Tech will play East Central Saturday night with the game kicking off at 6 o'clock p.m. If you can't make it to the game, there will be live video, audio, and stats available at ArkansasTechSports.com. And also, we will have full highlights of that game on next week's show. The Golden Suns cross-country team will also be back on the course this Saturday as the Suns will run in the Arkansas Little Rock Invitational. That race is scheduled for a 9 a.m. start at the Rebsman Golf Course in Little Rock. Then next week, the Wonder Boys golf team will close out their fall season at the Midwestern State Invitational. That tournament will be on Monday and Tuesday at the Wichita Falls Country Club in Wichita Falls, Texas. The Golden Suns golf team will also close out their fall season on Monday and Tuesday as they travel all the way to Sonoma, California for the Sonoma State Fall Invitational being held at the Foxtail Golf Club. Remember, you can watch a Tech Sports Report every Thursday afternoon across all Arkansas Tech Athletic social media pages, as well as on Tech TV every Friday morning at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 10 o'clock a.m. With that, we've reached the end of our show. We appreciate you watching. My name is Matt Jenkins, and we will see you guys next week right here on the Tech Sports Report.